Dennis Bermudez. How Yo, are what up, Buzz? How are you today, Dennis? It's pretty tired. Got home from work, and then I was like, dude, let's just not go to jiu-jitsu and take a 35-minute nap. 35-minute nap? That. Yep, did that. Ate broccoli soup, took a shower, now I'm here. Now you're here. Yeah. All right. That's good. I like that about you. I mean, come on. What were we talking about today? We, I feel like we talked about a lot of MMA stuff. So, Dustin, I don't know. Connor, like, I don't know. I don't know why, but he's like, you're not getting, I'm not donating any money, you fucking ripped hillbilly. What do you say? You ripped hillbilly? He, yeah, the thing that Connor, you, Connor to Dustin. Yeah, the thing that you sent me that was alarming was you said the fight's off. Which had me like, what the fuck? What do you mean the fight's off? And then Dustin replied with a picture of him knocked out via Dustin's hands. No, a picture of I've never seen that. Like that little zoom in, that clip, that little gif that he posted, that's new. The little I didn't see the gif, I just saw like a picture. You did oh, okay. No, no, no. So the referee was in the way, the camera didn't have the best angle. Right before he that right before that picture, that meme of Conor McGregor sleeping. Yeah. Dustin rattled across his chin and Connor went flat. And then Dustin hit him when Connor was out. Dustin hit him clean again. And Connor was just like, all right, I'm still out. And then that picture got taken of that meme that went around. Yikes. Yeah. So, listen, I feel like uh, Connor is a man of his word. I think this is a really bad look for him. Um, He said that he wanted to know where it was going. He said every time he donates money, he knows where it's going. Why does that make him the bad guy? Okay. No, it doesn't. Yeah. And then, so but, I saw, all right, all right, I saw all right. Mean- in, in Dustin's defense, he uh, said that he did reach back out and it didn't get anything back from Conor McGregor's people. I, I feel like Dustin definitely, like, I. Doesn't everybody know what Dustin's charity is? What is it? Say it right now. Man, what the oh. fuck do you mean? Everybody knows he has a charity. Everyone knows he does have a charity, yes. I just don't give a shit about what it is. I don't really care. Oh, that was that was that it's was for- right. Why do you say that? Oh, that made me look bad, right? Um, no, there's a lot of charities. I don't know. Just what does he? What does he do? What does his charity do? It's for like kids, like MMA, right? What do you mean, like kids, like MMA? It's building a gym for kids to do MMA in. I thought he was building houses or some shit. Uh. Uh. You think Volk knows? You could see. You could ask him. Yeah, I'm gonna. Hello. What's going on, mate? What's happening? Hey, could we get your uh, camera horizontal? Or... Okay, yeah. We can do that. Mm, just gonna make sure there's battery. Um, let's see. Does this work? It's not gonna work. <laughs> Is your phone locked? No, it's not. It's just I've got the I've got the charger in there. I'm gonna have to take it out. Hopefully that doesn't. Uh, we're going to lose charge halfway through. Is that how you wanted it? We well, yes. wanted it like uh, horizontal. It wasn't like that at the start? Well, it was. There we go. I That's... was going to say it. I did that. Oh, my bad. Yeah, I'll go get my ear. My ear right. Oh, look at that. The Vegas view. Okay, he's doing it right. Is that a Vegas view? Yeah, he's there for the ultimate yeah. fighter now. Oh, that's right. Living his best life. Wow. 
Yeah. Oh, should we call you Coach? Yeah, man. Coach says, let's do it. Coach oh, Bolton? What the fuck have I done? <laughs> oh, we lost him there. There we go. Yeah, there we go. yeah sorry. No, nah, no, nah, my bad. All right, mate. All good? You got yeah. me? So, so before uh, you hopped on, we were kind of talking Conor McGregor, Dustin Poirier. Like, why isn't Conor pay the charity? All right, yeah, he's been into that, huh? Well, have you seen this? You've seen this vault, yeah, right? Yeah, man, what's with all that? I have seen this, I have seen this, and they're getting stuck in all day. I wonder what's happening there. Well, he said $500,000, right? Yeah, well, that's all. I remember. I remember when they were at the press conference and they were talking about it and all that type of stuff. I do remember that. And then he, uh, <laughs> Paul had just put him on show with it, but damn. Because <laughs> $500,000, I think he got paid like a million to fight? A million and seventy dollars or something like that? Who is this? Dustin Poirier? Was that Dustin or was that? Oh, you're saying Connor. Connor got way more than that. Connor would have got more than that, huh? Yeah, Connor got a lot more than that. I would imagine Connor got at least twenty million. From the UFC? Yeah. What did he make? What does Connor get guaranteed? Connor makes a lot of guaranteed money. I don't know. Because the, the, the most I've ever seen a UFC fighter get paid was like, like, UFC document on the internet was like five million, I think. You know, I don't know. Those think, yeah, obviously, obviously, that's. Uh, you know, I don't think that's always the case. You know what I mean? What, what, what we see. Yeah, I, I listen. Think, I yeah. know the man's getting seriously paid, but. The visual of what the UFC, UFC shows on their website, you know what I mean? Of the payouts, I don't think it's 20 million, Stan. I, I don't think. Have, uh, yeah. Oh, you're right. I don't think it would show that. What does it say? What does it like say? Like I said, I know the dude's getting paid. I mean, well, a piece of me, right? Like, I don't know. You knocked me out and, you, and like, maybe. I'm trying to find, like, a number on it. <laughs> Double or nothing for your charity? Yeah, well, that's what I mean. Yeah, well, it's a, obviously it's a, tr a tricky one. You don't have the full story. I, I seen that Connor's like he just wanted to see the full plan or whatnot, but it's a, obviously that's a touchy one. You know what I mean? It's like because it's the right thing to do. You know, it's like for kids or hang on. Do you know what Dustin's charity is? Me and Stan we were just talking about. It. I'm I'm not really sure what it is. Uh, I think I think they do a few different things uh, from what I've seen. I'm not too sure. I don't know too much about it, but I think they do. Uh, a couple of things. I know they did do something for kids. I think they bingo sort of stand, you son of a bitch. What is yeah, he doing? Building gyms? A few different things. Yeah, they did. They're doing like they'll do things like that. Like they might do a. From what I've seen, they might do like a gym, uh, like you know maybe a youth center or something. I think he's going to do his own gym, uh, help with kids and all that type of stuff. I'm not sure. Uh, I might. I don't know too much, but just from what I've seen, that's what, that's what I gathered. Okay. So on to Alex Volkanovsky. I actually, I don't know if this is like what, do people from Australia drink Foster's? Foster. <laughs> Man, it's been around here. Yeah. Old Foster's. I'll tell you what, I've never really drunk a Foster though. How's that? I don't think I have. Yeah, they're not back terrible. Back in the day, Foster, back in the day, Foster was, uh, where was that? I'm pretty sure. But is that like the college beer for Australians? Nah, man. To be honest, I think it's just the uh, well uh, marketed, maybe around the world, because everyone. I've actually had a few people say that to me about Fosters. I drank the fucking thing, so I couldn't tell you anything about it. But um, yeah, maybe it's just marketed very well internationally. It's an Australian beer, though, correct? No, I think it's yeah, an American it's Australian beer. beer. Let's see where it's made. Oh, man, well, like I said, you probably, you guys probably know more about it than me. I know my VB and all that type of stuff back in Australia. Yeah, really, Victoria really Bitter. Right? Weddings and shit like that, Oh, right? yeah, I drink here and there, you know, obviously. Uh, yeah, here and there. Now I'm recovered, obviously recovered from what happened. I had a, had a few the other night, but yeah, that was a, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, bro, oh, I saw something. Out, we call him. I saw something the other day. You used to be like 240 or some shit like that, 260? 
214 pounds. So 214. 97 kilograms, yeah, about 214 pounds. And then what made you legit. decide to like just change your life around to be a 145 pounder? Man, I just slowly went down. I, I end up uh, playing here my, my last year of football, rugby league. I end up, uh, you know, I was like, oh, I'm going to lose a little bit of weight. Started losing weight. And then I thought, oh, I'm going to have a couple of fights because I was training for a little bit and then I wanted to fight. So while I was playing football, concrete, and I was fighting, uh, you know, I was doing all three. So it was, uh, I was bringing the weight down. This was at middleweight, like I said. Uh, like I've been saying, my first fights were at middleweight. So I was fighting at middleweight, and which I literally had to cut weight for. And then just slowly went down, went down, went down and had my first first loss at welterweight. And that's when I was like, all right, enough of the big boys. We'll, we'll, we'll go, you know, we'll go down. And uh, yeah, have, haven't lost since. So it's going well. My, my man. And now what happened? And also like, wait, wait. Losing weight and your body looking good is like a little bit of addicting, right? What's that? I missed that one. Say it again. Like uh, losing. Losing weight and like your body looking good, looking mirror, like it's a little bit addictive. Like, you know what? Like, damn, I'm looking good. I should bang out like another 30 push ups just because. Yeah, man. Like, what's well, a blowout, mate? You see some of the photos, like, uh, even just seeing my head. I've, I've uh, put photos of my head when I was 214 pounds to now, mate. It's, it's a blowout. Like, literally, it would be literally twice the fucking size. It was huge. Like, I remember that was one thing that I always said. I always said, like, when I started losing weight um, and I was dieting and I like, kept talking about losing weight, I'm going, fuck, I don't know if it's going to work. I don't know if I can lose weight. It just won't won't suit this big head. Like, I don't think I could do it. Like, I just look like a big fucking lollipop. You know what I mean? So, but uh, I was lucky the head shrunk with the body. But, uh, you know, man, never, never, obviously never been so healthy and, you know, looking, looking healthy, looking lean. And it's been good. And even uh, this before this camp, before the camp uh, that I was going to, obviously, to fight Ortega, like, I, I stayed lean, you know, I was like, you know what, if I need to do any, uh, you know, whatever, media, or, you know, if I need to do a photo shoot, I can rip the fucking shirt off, no dramas, you know what I mean? Because sometimes uh, out of camp, I don't want to take the shirt off. I'm like, yeah, not yet. Maybe till we get a bit closer to, to the fight, then we'll get the shirt off. But uh, this camp, I was able to take the shirt off all, all, all camp, so it was good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, get, yeah, give a man, like, four weeks out, three weeks out, I'll take the shirt off. But if we're, or if we're months out, hold off on the cameras, all right? Let me just, you know. Are we breaking up here? Sorry. Oh, you're good. I lost uh, his ear for a second. So wait, but, uh, Volk. You're in Vegas right now for the Ultimate Fighter. Wait, man. This Volk just had a very uh, serious bout with COVID, right? Sorry, man. I keep losing you. I don't know if that's, that, that must be my Wi-Fi here. Say that again. Sorry. You just had a serious bout with COVID. Yeah, man. Yeah, I did. Man, I was uh, obviously, you know, I, I I was meant to fight, so I was training hard. I was here a little bit early. I was here uh, two weeks before my fight, uh, so I could help uh, Brad Riddell. Uh, you know, where our team could help corner him and, and you know whatnot. So we come early, uh, started training, training really hard. So our, our, you know, our last week of training uh, before fight week is is still it's probably the hardest hardest week, yeah, because we want to peak at the right time. So I end up busting my ass in the gym and I think I, I must have got COVID somewhere, you know, somewhere between, you know, getting into the bubble, you know what I mean? And a couple of days would have passed and that must have been when COVID started hitting me because I remember getting a couple of little headaches uh, while I was training, didn't think nothing of it, but we got tested and then found out, you know, we tested positive. But, you know, I think I had COVID while I was training really hard. So my immune system would have been down while I was battling COVID. Then I got all the COVID symptoms after we, we tested positive. Uh, so you had the, you know, the, the fevers and obviously congested and body aches and everything. Like I got pretty much all of them, but then I got the pneumonia, like, you know, so like the secondary oh, infection, they, they call it. I got like the COVID pneumonia. So I ended up getting that. And then, you know, my lungs just kept getting worse. Started coughing up more and more blood. Um, you know, my breathing started getting, uh, you know, worse. So what? I had to go to hospital and, Get on the medication. I needed the medication to, to to help the lungs. Otherwise, I just kept going downhill. Damn, you got that bad, Buzz, huh? Yeah, fuck, fuck me up. Uh, but your buddy Brad, he was supposed to fight my buddy Gregor. What? How did that work out? Did they just get paid? Do you know how, what the the UFC did about pay with those guys? 
Um, you cut out right there, but I think I heard what you were saying. I'm, I'm not exactly sure. I think the boys still looked after him because it was an unfortunate situation. Uh, Brad didn't even get COVID. Yeah. Just because he was in close contact or exposed, um, that's why they pulled it that morning because we found out the day before he he fought. And then the next morning, you know, I get woken up getting told that his fight's been pulled. And, you know, obviously you feel bad for, for the guys and obviously Gregor as well. Yeah. So I hope the boys got paid, you know what I mean? Again, it's it's an unfortunate situation, but the especially knowing that they didn't even have COVID. So, you know, he never got it, but uh, the fight had to be pulled. So If I was him, yeah, I'd be fucking with you. Like, it sucks, hey. but, you know, I guess that's what happens. If I was him, I'd be fucking with you. Like, yo, you owe me like the other half my purse. Uh, well, it, it's man, it, it got a few, a few of us in our team. So, uh, you know, we were there and then it just, like I said, the, the fucking thing's contagious because it ended up getting a few members of our team. So we ended up testing them. They had to get rid of us straight away, get us out of the bubble. But, um, you know, we just were sitting there thinking, man, I hope I don't give it to Brad or, or Jamie Malarkey because he was fighting news with us as well. So we were just like, man, I hope they don't, you know, their fights don't get pulled. But And Shane, Shane Young as well, sorry. But, but yeah, lucky enough, no one else got it. It just got, it got like a, a few of us and, you know, we – got it out of the way and luckily didn't get anyone else. What about my homie Frank? Was he there? Yeah, Frank was there. Did he get, did you I give him Frank's the COVID? Uh, no, nah, I think he's already had it like twice anyway. So, you know, he's all good. <laughs> he's got them antibodies, mate. I'm telling you. <laughs> Frank's the man. How's he nah, doing? He's all good. He's a, he, yeah, good. He's actually coming probably Thursday. So, um, to be part of your team? Yeah, so he's actually, yeah. He's going to be yeah, part of your squad? Well, I haven't even known. Yeah, he is. I haven't really told anyone, so I guess usually the guys are... Uh, I wasn't going to mention the team till I was out there, but, yeah, he's going to be one of them. But he's going to be with me all, all, all week. And, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure we're going to start filming soon, so looking forward to it. It's going to be good. Yeah, he's good fun. Uh, the team we've got is actually going to be real good. Real good banner. I can't wait, mate. It's going to be a good time. Uh, uh, the guys you're, you're getting, they have to fight first to get into the house. Say that again, sorry. The guys you're that are coming on the show, they had to fight to get into the house, correct? Man, it's cutting out, but I think uh, I think uh, how how it works. Um, now we won't be in the house with everyone. Obviously, we'll mingle with them, train with them, and and do do a couple of things. But we're going to be in our own house. I think we still need to do a bubble and all that type of stuff. They but, fight uh, to get on the yeah, show, the, though. Do you are, they uh, fight to get on the no, show? I don't right? Think they're doing that. I don't think uh, no. Nah. You just pick random guys. I think they. I think the team's already picked. I'm not too sure exactly how that goes. I don't think. Uh, I thought they stopped that. I know they used to do that, but now I think they just uh, choose choose guys and they're in. I don't think they do the fighting thing anymore, which would have been good, man. I used to enjoy that. You go there, watch. Yeah. The oh the man, team. you need that. They yeah, need that. Man, I used to love that. So that would have been good, but uh, you know, I think the team's already picked. But man, it's it. Man, I'm just. Just, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a good time and make the most of it. Now, and have they rescheduled the fight? It, wait, wait. Have they rescheduled the fight yet? They they haven't yet because, uh, well, obviously, while this was happening, I had COVID. I was in quarantine. Um, and then I was waiting to get the positive test so I could go home. Then we got wind of, of the house. And then we're like, oh, all right. And then obviously they had to go through a uh, – uh, through uh, Ortega as well. And uh, yeah, it was all good. And the next minute they're like, yeah, it's on. And, and like 10 minutes later it was announced. So uh, it all happened pretty quick. Uh, but uh, yeah, again, so the, the thing is the doctors were telling me, obviously because uh, I, my case got pretty severe. So, uh, you know, I had to get on the, the medication. So the lungs aren't the best right now. Even right now I've got to ease into my training. I'm only allowed, I was allowed 15%. Then I've got to go up 10% each week type of type of thing. So they don't really want me uh, fighting till, like, I think the doctors originally said maybe June or something. So I don't know if this that's a reason why the UFC were like, all right, well, let's do this, you know. So uh, I'm not sure exactly when they're going to do it, but I think it will be have to be after filming. So we're going to film, uh, see what happens in there. Yeah, as I've been saying, there's no bad blood yet, but stick us in the house together with challenges and things like that. I'm a competitive man, so... I'm gonna do what I gotta to do to win. If uh, we'll see, we'll see how it goes down. But I'm looking forward to it. I don't know Brian Ortega, but I know what I've heard. There will be bad blood, Alex. 
He's, oh, really? There you go. So. He's, he's like a Diaz brother, if you will. He's going to create a little bit of animosity just to... He grilled Menace. Menace has a story of him sizing Menace up. like he's, And then you, yeah. you hear stories about him. He's from the hood. Uh, yeah, I've, I've heard about that. Eh? So, yeah, it'll be good. I remember even, uh, obviously, him slapping uh, Jay Park and all that type of stuff. So, oh, that's right. Hey, it's all good, man. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. If, uh, if there's going to be bad blood, we'll let it happen. And we'll, we'll yeah. We'll let the words and whatever fly. Fists need to fly. Fists will need to fly. But yeah, we'll, we'll try and keep it as simple as we can. But at the same time, we'll see. We'll see which uh, which path it goes. I'm just gonna wing it. Whatever happens, happens. <sighs> I'm into it, man. Because the the reason why I was asking if they were fighting to get on the show was because one thing that helped my team when I was on the show was we had a fight to get the show, and they were like, "Yo, these guys all just did a camp." to get here let's not run them through a whole nother camp for their next fight in like two weeks let's just maintenance like just nice and easy just you know keep our weight down keep everything fluid where like Bisbee was like running those guys into the ground <laughs> running them into the ground that's a fight the same way look that's a obviously we need to find exactly how the schedule works um yeah, we, we need to find out what's happening when they're fighting and whatnot. Obviously, if people are fighting, you know, I'm not going to, yeah, I'm not going to burn them into the ground. But at the same time, as long as it's not within the week, we, we train we train hard until a week out. So I'm going to keep it pretty close to how we roll. Uh, again, we won't, we won't cook them too hard, but I mean, you know, I'm known for my fitness. So I'm going to have to throw some hard workouts in there. We'll see how we get. Yeah, for sure. Well, like what we do is—is is the guy that was fighting that week running like fight week for you know when you fight, but all the other guys that you don't know when they're fighting, yo, you're gonna get some work in for sure, you know. Get that work in, one hundred percent. Boys need to work. Boys need to get fit. Boys need to get ready because my team's winning. My team's gonna win no matter what. I'm gonna make them ready. Give them everything I know, and I cannot wait. Is the uh, is the family gonna come out and hang out with you a little bit, or you're away from family for the whole thing? Yeah, away from the family, which is unfortunate. Obviously, it's a long time, you know what I mean? Because we didn't expect this to happen. Uh, it's gonna be the longest time I've ever been away from my family, which is tough. But I mean, this is an opportunity that we need to take. Um, I offered the missus if she wanted to come with the fam, but she's like, man, I ain't traveling with the two girls, uh, young girls, all the way over there. It'd be just too much. And then obviously doing the quarantines and all that type of stuff that we need to do when we get back home. It's, you know, obviously we've got a Ariana in school and, and just things like that. We just, just, it, it can't really happen. It would be too much on, on my wife and obviously the kids are missing out on school and all that type of stuff. So oh, that's right. it's unfortunate, but luckily for technology, you know, we yeah. can, uh, I can at least do whatever I can, you know, I'm on the other side of the world, but I can't look at it as what can I do while I'm home? What can I do while I'm here? FaceTime, you know, you know, do yeah, as yeah, much as yeah, I can yeah. from this side of the world. Get people, get my family, get get people to obviously help help the wife out as well, so that you know, with the kids and whatnot. But that's all I can do from, from over here. But uh, yeah, but obviously it's a uh, it is tough, but it needs to happen, man. We're here. This is opportunity that was given to us, and maybe we just we move forward and we make it happen. And I'll be home soon enough and get to spend time with them uh, before we know. Yeah, because I remember, so I was on Team Mayhem, and then Bisbing was the other team. Mayhem was actually like an amazing coach. He was there every morning, ready to rock and roll. Bisbing, he would miss practices and shit like that because he was out partying the night before and shit. It was funny. <laughs> I remember one time there was like a team select, oh, and Bisbing didn't show up for like a fight announcement. <laughs> it was fucking funny as fuck. Oh, really? D didn't even show up for the fight <laughs> announcement. It was all right, well, Alex, yeah, before we let you go, the thing is, uh, oh, that, I, yep. I was yep. going to say, before we let you go, we want to go over a few fights, and then we have Chris Algieri in our waiting room. So we'll let Chris jump in here, and then we'll just talk about some of the upcoming fights. Yep. What else you got going on? They got you in quarantine right now in Vegas? No, 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 it's not quarantine. Uh, we're, we're allowed out of that, but I think that's what I was going to say. Like, you know, that it'll be too hard for us to go out and, and get on the piss and come in too hungover because we're going to have to be in a bubble as well. So the fighters will be in the bubble in their house. I think we're going to have to be in our bubble as well, the coaching uh, staff and whatnot. So we won't really be able to, to run about, but, you know, we'll get a, hooked up with a nice big house and 
It'll be some some good, good good fun, but I mean, yeah, we just yeah, we're still getting details. Again, this all happened really quick, but uh, yeah, the guys are doing a good job getting us all ready, and we'll have a lot more information this week. And the, and you're except for Frank Kent Hickman, your team is on low key. You're not you're well, not yeah, you, you, you got is. that out of me because you already know him. He's I don't know. He was probably going to eventually tell you anyway. But there's a uh, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be good. Like I said, there's a few people in there. And there's a a couple guys that you uh you will probably know, and it'll, it'll be good fun. Like I said, uh, you know we're all about having a good time and banter. You know that's how our gym rolls. Obviously, we you know we we're serious when we need it. We need to be, but there's nothing but banter and good times. That that's how we like to train. Even when we're outside, ready to fight. Our backstage, you know, we're having a laugh, we're doing our thing, listening to music, having a good time. Uh, you know, you know, we don't want to sit there and uh, everyone's different, but that's how we roll. We're, 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 you know, we're pretty playful and fun. So that's the vibes we want to get. So I'm looking forward to it because again, uh, it's, yeah, it's going to be some uh, some good things happen on, so on the show. So you're going to be bored. So I cannot wait. You're going to be you're going to be bored from hey? time to time. We can get we get you and the crew on from time to time here. Mate, yeah, we could do that. Yeah, we could do that. But to be honest, with the the crew we got, you can't be bored, mate. Like I said, huh? it's, a, it, it's good fun with the guys that are going to be on this show. So wait till we're on the show. Uh, you'll see a good time when, yeah, Frank's going to be there. The boy, the world needs to see Frank. Yes, the world needs to see Frank. Needs him. <laughs> Chris Algieri, thank you for joining us. What's up, gentlemen? What's going on? Chris, Alex, Alex Volkanovsky, hey, Chris Algieri. Up? Have you guys ever met before? No, no, we have not met. Nice to meet you, champ. You too, brother. The world champion boxer, Chris Algieri, and nutritionist. So, Alexander, I know you got your shit on lock, but Chris helped me get that 145. I'm currently like, Chris, you'd be disappointed me. I'm probably like a buck, like 88, 190. Dude, it was never easy getting you to 45. <laughs> that was always a lot of work. Yeah, well, I the party. <clears throat> but even... Uh, so, Alex, have you been paying attention to the Jake Paul, Ben Askren I situation? Have. I have, man. To be honest, I'm, I'm intrigued, man. I, you know, I cannot wait. I'm definitely going to be tuning in. Um, yeah, man. Look, it's a, it's a blowout. Like how many people are still talking about it? as much, as much as people want to act like they, they're not interested. I guarantee you they are, and I guarantee you a lot of people are going to be tuning in. So, I cannot wait. I want to see what happens, man. Because again. Obviously, people look at Ben Askren's training videos and all that. We all know that, you know, he's not the cleanest boxer. You know what I mean? Like his hands are, even in training videos, you, you're like, oh, no. but at the same time, you know, he's tough. He's a game. He's got a lot of heart. Is he going to make it messy? Will he be able to wear uh, Jake Paul out? Man, I'm looking forward to him. I cannot wait. I, there's a few questions I want answered. So I can't wait. I'm totally invested. I'm so invested. If there was one fight I had to pay for this fight this year, <laughs> this might be it. <laughs> Dennis is no, trying to bet on it. Chris. Chris. Yeah. Going off of what you say, I'm either putting 500 on it or I'm putting like three and change. Yeah, I mean, it depends on the line. If it if it's a if if it's really heavy in favor of Paul, I'd say put some money on on Askren. But if That's, not Askren, did I mean, I, did I see? Oh. No, go ahead. Right now, Did it's I plus say that, 140. Uh, ben Askren was favorite? No, no right now, I underdog, if, plus if 140. I don't know. So uh, Ben's like ben a has... one and a half underdog. Yeah, it's not that big. I thought I seen Jake Paul uh, saying something about uh, on his on his Instagram about um, him being the underdog, underdog, and people are you know as Ben Askren being the favorite, and he's like, oh yeah, you, you, you know, he's like, you can't see. So he's uh, saying stuff like that. So that's what I thought, but I'm, I'm not too I sure. I think he's talking maybe about a different line actually being that. a fighter. Yeah, yeah. I think I think just in, in the eyes of people who consider you know fight fights for us that he's probably you know considered the underdog. But in terms of the the, the line, he's definitely the favorite. And honestly, I I. I he, Paul's not bad. He can he can box a little bit. He's definitely never been in with anybody anywhere close to the level of Askren in any type of fight sport. But Askren just isn't a boxer. You know, it's re, it, it's a very short turnaround for him to take this fight, train, and then get in there with a guy you know like Paul, who's big, athletic, and young. He retired. He got hip surgery, and he, Paul. I mean, the timing couldn't be better for for Jake Paul. And it's a perfect matchup for him. He's fighting a guy who doesn't punch. 
<laughs> he, yeah. he hand picked he hand picked Asper for a reason. And Dennis was another good one. Uh, yeah, I think that was probably even more of a live th- more of a live fight though. Askren just he never had hands in, you know, in the cage. He wasn't he was now he's a grinder. Askren, Askren fought our boy Jay Haran, mm-hmm. and Jay's got hands. Yeah, although wrestling was a huge factor huge part of that fight. <laughs> but Jay's got hands with smaller gloves and speed and power and, and a lot of fights, especially at that time. And caught yeah, him. And touched him a few and a was catching times. And was catching him. Yeah, I think what, like what Alexander said, I think you're absolutely right. If, if Askren can make it ugly and drag the fight out, he's got a real shot. Now, he also, me and Stan talk about his, he does this like zombie walk where like his hands are out in front and he's very hard to hit his face with his hands. Now he's got big pillows to with more surface area to block more shit. Yeah, but Jake Paul's a big dude, and he's got long arms. He's in it. That 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 kind of defense. If, if you think, if you watch uh, Hasim Rahman when he fought Lennox Lewis, he tried to use that that defense. Right hand went right through the middle and cleaned his clock. Yeah, but Jake Paul isn't that guy. No, but Askren's not Hasim Rahman either. Yes, and even what I mentioned was like George Foreman. Ben Askren needs to be like George Foreman, but he doesn't hit anywhere near where George Foreman. He's the get up and put his head on his chest and just bang away and make it ugly and grind and push him around and don't make it a boxing match at all. Yeah. So another thing me and Stan was talking about is in the clinches, you know, sometimes boxing referees can be like very like, whoa, hands off the head. Or sometimes they're like, mm-hmm. all right, you know, they let it yeah. ride a little bit. That's on the discretion can- of the ref. Some refs, pref- like they're okay with infighting and they'll allow you to like, you know, almost like dirty box some which I think that's the way it should be, but uh, I have a feeling that it's going to lean towards Jake Paul and that there's not going to be a lot of that. It's also a small uh, ring, I think, right? It's the same one Mike Tyson fought in? Oh, I don't know. I don't know the details. I would imagine the same organization. Interesting. But that's all stuff that can be contracted. There's not a standard ring size. I don't know the ring size. I I think they're going 10-ounce gloves. I don't know what that will change in the fight. What's the weight? What are they fighting at? I think 190. And then I think it was eight two-minute rounds, which I think favors Jake Paul to even, like I, Dennis wants to bet $500. I was like, Jake Paul could easily decision him. Yeah. Well, minutes. here's another thing I was saying. I was talking to uh, Cliff from Gamma Labs or G Fuel, and he's like, Jake Paul has, like, he's so rich. Like, so in my head, my head got going, like, what if he greases the judges? Like, listen, if Ben Ashton wins, Jake Paul is now he's worth, you know. He's, he's probably not going to have to. I think just the perception of, of him and his aura, uh, you know, all, all the attention that he brings could be enough to sway could be enough to sway a judge depending on who the judges are. Well, the even thriller might be like, listen, if it's yeah, close, if it goes to the decision, give it to our guy Jake Paul because now we can boost this guy to take on somebody else and we'll make so much, so many millions. Versus if Ben Askren wins, he's going back to where is he live? Wyoming or no, he wins. Wisconsin? That, 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 that Jake Paul show's over. Yeah. All right. So we'll go picks and then we can circle back to that with Chris. So, do you think Ben Askren wins? Alex. Oh. Bulk. Was that for me? Does Ben yes. Askren yeah, win? Yeah, sorry, mate. I keep, keep breaking up. <laughs> do I think Ben Askren can win? Mate, it's... I, 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 sort of think, I sort of think he can, but, you know, it's going to be hard for me to, to, to bet on that, to be honest. Uh, just because I've watched some videos of Jake uh, and... Uh, Again, like he can, he can box, and he's got decent hands. I've even, even spars. He gets in there. I know he's not sparring guys that are going to fight and be there the whole time, but I think he might be tidy enough to, to, to win this anyway. But again, I still think it'll be messy. Um, I think uh, Ben Askren was tough anyway. I reckon it'll be pretty tough. So, uh, but yeah, I think he will do this whole claw thing that you're talking about, and and get in there, make it dirty. You know, like you said, head on the chest. You know, whack at the guts, a little dirty boxing around the sides, but 
Um, but yeah, I just don't know if that, that, that will be enough for the judges and, and things like that. But we will see. That's what I mean. That's why I want to know because you watch some training videos and you think, all right, Ben don't look too good. Jake looks all right, but then you you know you listen to Ben. He goes, "Yeah, I'm a fighter. He's not a fighter." Right, right. So then they get into the details. I'm like, "Oh yeah, all right. I believe. I believe uh, both sides." So let's see what happens. It, it does hurt me a little bit when he's like, "I lived this like, bro. You've lived this life for like two years, maybe." Like Chris, you didn't try to put your your feather in that hat. Like I'll fight him. Yeah, I, I'm, gonna I fight, I'm gonna fight real boxers. <laughs> I did. Hang on, Chris. How yeah. much, that would be? Uh, you did fight Pacquiao. I'm trying to think. Would that be a bigger payday than Pacquiao? No. Pacquiao is probably the second biggest payday you can get in the last like 20 years. Yeah, he's he's he's, he's, he's the golden ticket. Other than Canelo at this point, actually, Pacquiao probably might have been bigger than that. But yeah, no. I mean, but also like. I've, I've, I've always done this for the sport. Like I, I, I like fighting. I want to be, I want to be, you know, I want to be a real fighter and warrior and fight real guys and, you know, create a legacy. I'm not here to be well, me or- personally. I want something to really hurt him and be like, yo, you're listen. I, I appreciate the passion you have for the sport, but you're not, it's not you though. Uh, yo, Ben might be the guy. I, I, I mean, I don't see it. He can whiz, but I don't see it. And Volk, if you need a nutritionist or boxing coach to come out, we know a guy. He's in, he's doing the Ultimate Fighter, Chris. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. That's awesome. He's in, look, he's got he's got Vegas yeah, landscape yeah. in his back windows. Oh, that's where you're at right now. That's where we at. Yeah, look at that view. I know you're in Vegas. But you're, at, you're there for the the Ultimate Soaking Fighter. it up, mate. Good way. Good, good. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're over here for that. That that'll start filming. We start filming very soon, and just soaking up the sun, mate. The weather's good. We come here. Literally uh, for the fight, and it was freezing. And mm. then literally, like maybe two weeks later, now it's just hot every day, hot. So uh, it's been good. So we're you know soaking up the pool and, and whatnot. But we get we get uh, we get to work soon. So yeah, I'm ready to I'm ready to work. And obviously the media and all that will will happen. And then we're going to start filming, and then we we into it. Yeah, you got to get that tan right before the show starts. You got to be got to be nice and even. That's important. <laughs> That's exactly what we want. <laughs> Chris, what do you? Have- to these days uh i'm training i'm looking i'm looking to make a, a i hate saying a comeback but a comeback here in june so i actually literally just started camp yesterday uh down here in south florida so down here full time you know getting getting after it so me and you are like no longer neighbors anymore nah dude i mean pretty much since the pandemic i've been down here you know new york new york is that is, place is even really under funny. your name still is that place still under your name or yeah yeah no okay. I got a couple of places i still come yeah no i, I still come back okay we can still go bang down some beers over at the uh, the beer garden. Well, no, there's a place that opened up legit between me, my house, and your house called San City. Oh, yo, I, I actually went there. It's great. Very dangerous place. <laughs> oh. Very strong. Very strong beers there, yeah. Yeah, I went there with my lady on like a Sunday. I'm like, oh, it's open. Let's go check it out. I had like four beers. Then we went to this like new uh, Irish pub on the corner. Yeah, yeah. I had like yeah. one drink there with dinner, and then I do not remember my walk home. I was like, this is fucked up. That's awesome. You could walk, though. Very close. I had one beer at San Cedar, and I'm like, I, I stopped myself. I was about to do what you did. And I was like, you know what? I'm good. I got work tomorrow. I got I to gotta be all right. They have got like a 14% beer there. Oh, fuck. We need to bring Volkanovsky to Long Island. <laughs> And like style yeah, his yeah, hair, yeah. the way like we Bum put our hair. Everything to open up. I want to. I want to get. I want to see see a few things. You know what I mean. I want to get. I want to get around. You know, I'm even thinking doing Europe Europe trips and whatnot. But but I mean, yeah, obviously, uh, it's tough with uh, what's going on. But I mean, hey, it seems like everything over here is opening up uh, a fair bit. Is that the case? Is that everywhere? Is that every state or? I think Vegas so. Seems like it's it's all good. Shit's popping over here. You know what I mean. You said to wear your mask if you're not eating. That's it. You wear your mask, but you can do whatever you want, pretty much, it seems. <laughs> you just walk around the strip with a drink in your hand. You don't have to have your mask on. It depends on where you are. Yeah. Well, there you go. Right. How is New York I'm right now, Florida, Dennis? Florida, it's fucking wide open. Yeah, Florida, it's do whatever you want. Chris, Stan the man moved down to Florida. He lives You're there. in Florida right now? Yeah, I'm in Tampa right now. No shit. Yeah. Yeah. 
He, yeah, he jumped out of here when, like, the... Where did I see you? I saw you at the Caribe oh, Royale. Right. I saw you at the Caribe Royale for those boxing fights, for the um, Havoc yeah, boxing fights. So you're, you're here full-time now. You're in Tampa. Uh, open-ended. I'm here yeah. for whatever, the foreseeable <laughs> smart, future. Smart, smart man. Until he wants to go back to New York. Yeah. <laughs> Until New York so opens Chris, back up. Do we have a date? You're looking, you're looking to fight in June, you said? Yeah, it's going to be, uh, yeah, it's early June. I can't announce it yet. We're, we're finalizing the deal as we speak, like literally looking at my phone. But um, yeah, I should, I should within the next week or so, I should have it locked in. So like Alex, that, the way they bring out like guest trainers one day and they have them walk through the door and then they put the little name on the bottom of the screen. It could say Chris Algieri, WB, former WBO champion, nutritionist to Daniel Jacobs and all these things. They'll list all the guys. Well, we got to put Dennis Bermudez first. Dennis Bermudez, <laughs> then Daniel Jacobs. You could put... Fine, fine. <laughs> they could put a little highlight of UFC guys he's worked with. And then he walks out and then he shows the guys how to box for a day. So I, uh, so our buddy Chris Wade's going down to 45. Yeah. What's that, two weeks? I'm like, yo, you reach out to Chris because. Talk to him every day. Talk to him every day, Jake. And I was doing, he's, he's doing, he's doing great. He's, uh, he's ahead of schedule. He's at, he actually just texted me, uh, just texted me. Ah, oh, dude, he's, he's, he's great. Because last time I spoke with him, he's 160. I'm like, dude, I would be 58. You're like, what's he, two weeks out? He just texted me, he's 156. He's fine. It's, I'm, I'm confused because he has huge bones. Yeah. He I was worried about him making the weight, um, you know, when he first reached out to me because he's always lean too. He's a lean guy. He's yeah. got big joints, big, big knee, big shoulder, big elbows. Um, but he, he, you know, he, he, he's been doing, he's been doing it the right way. He started early. He did. Well, with COVID, he was just like, bro, like, I think people, uh, like you, you remember like, like wrestling back in the day when like, I guess like winter break, no coach would be like, yo, do this, do that. And you would just be like, I gotta keep my weight under control. Mm -hmm. And like you would, your weight would be like awesome because you're running every day and no one's telling you what to do, but you're doing it. COVID's been like that for Chris Wade, I think. Like Ryan and Greg and his coaches were like, dude, where are you for training? With like, and he was just doing his own thing when he wanted, how he wanted. And, uh, his weight just stayed like down low, you know. He also started seeing like a new chick, which usually wait, helps wait. with like your. That's like nice. That job. does not help me. Nice job, man. <laughs> new, kept new chicks are not left. good for me. <laughs> well, hang on, like no, you party with them by the same token. Like instead of like being like I'm gonna sleep in, you like if she's not in bed with you, you're like I gotta like stay ripped, you know. Yeah. I don't know because I talked to Gregor Gillespie, right, and yeah. he was telling me about because his. His test levels, some of that, he's like, yeah, they were like, whatever. And then he said, I started seeing a girl and my test levels went up. Hey. There's something with that, for sure. Uh, yeah, uh, that definitely makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's part of being a fighter, bro. You got you to have women around. Yeah, but when you stay with one for so long, there's like this comfort, like, that's... Yeah. <laughs> that's probably the opposite, yeah. Oh, you're saying they're you got to replace weird. her? When you meet them, they're like this. You plateau, and then they're still there. You're like, Shoosh. Whatever you were rambling about, Menace, you made Alex leave. Well, it was weird because we were like, we gave him like the, hey, man, we'll catch you later. And he stuck around. I was like, okay, sick. <laughs> no, nah, we didn't give him the catch later. We gave him like, they're going to talk about fights. And then we were just like, yeah, we're all from New York. We'll have a conversation. You just sit there. You're from Australia. I was about to do a we'll chewy for him. I thought we were talking about. I thought we talked about the aspirin. But not. He's a. This weekend. He's the man, Alex. Thank you for stopping by. Oh, love Alex. Yeah, he's a he's a fucking stud. We should get him out to Long Island in the summer. Then we will throw him around. People don't right. understand what oh, Long Island so summers are like. So you're like a legit snowbird now. Yeah. So you're gonna fight early June. You'll be in Long Island till the whole summer. Because yeah, Long Island like summers September are the best place in the world. What's that? You'll be in, the, in the Long Island until like September 15th, yeah. 20th, and then back down to Florida? Yes, sir. That's what I was going to say to Volkanovski. I love Long Island summer. 
is if Volkanovski ever wants to go to Long Island, go in the summertime, and that rivals anywhere in the world. I agree. I agree. Long Island summers are like I, I, there's not uh, many other places I'd rather be. But here, Volkanovski now, one said, thing "My new job that sucks." Wait, wait, hey so brother. The most overtime is. I couldn't catch much of what you guys were saying. It must be the Wi-Fi. So he was freezing up on us, but thank you, Alex, for coming. Yeah, we well, he's you. been freezing the whole time. Yeah, and then we have Craig Jones is supposed to be hopping in any minute. But yeah, he is, Craig, is Craig actually is he is he gonna uh, grapple uh, that chick? Oh, I hope so. I just I he just, just on his page looking of, at that. He said it's too it's he's too far invested to like pull out now. Oh, that's so awesome. <laughs> I love everything about it. Me too. <laughs> me too. Like, Stan was showing me this stuff, and I was like, I liked Craig Jones as it was, but this was like a new level. And then you saw his one video about him like going to the strip club and it was yeah, was, yeah, I did see that. So I, I do a podcast with, with Gary Tonin and yes. uh, Frankie Chimera, and we were talking about that. I didn't, I didn't hear about it until then. And then I went on his page and looked at it. I didn't realize how much bigger she is than him. Holy shit! Huge. I, I, he's a big dude. I didn't realize she was that big. Yeah, what what are her stats, Dan? Is she's I think she's four? like six three. How wait, how big is uh Craig? I thought he was like six three. I think No, <laughs> he's not that big. I think so was, uh, Let's see. Gordon Ryan's taller than Is he? Like okay. hang on. Maybe he's Daddy Garcia is like she could possibly have like an inch on Gordon Ryan. Uh, I don't know. What? Because Gordon with Gordon's probably like what? He's probably like six three, right? Nah, he's probably six one. Oh yeah. Oh okay. I'm thinking they're way bigger than than they are. She's six two two thirty five. And what's correct? She's fucking huge. He's five eleven. I think he's a one seventy. So he probably weighs 185. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's going to matter personally, but I'm not a, I'm no jujitsu expert, but. Well, I mean, he's like, he's arguably one of the best in the world. Yeah. No, I mean, not arguably, no, no, no. he's one he's, of the best. He's the second best in the world. That's what he claims. Or at least that's what he always says. <laughs> That, hang on, what did he say to her? He said, I'd never win anything. Yeah. <laughs> um, That's why I try and go against little kids and girls. Yeah, yeah G- Gordon's bigger than him, so Gordon's 6'2". So he's maybe 5'11". We'll ask him. But all I'm seeing is he's competed at 185. Bro, if he has a red bandana on with a wife beater... Uh, I might lose it. <laughs> oh, oh no! Perfect timing. Craig! What's going on, guys? Where's the bandana, bro? <laughs> I left the bandana in LA. Oh. We were just talking about your stint with uh, Gabby Garcia, and like, we've never been more in love. It's. <laughs> What the uh, the woman beater outfit? Is that what it was? <laughs> yeah, that's why I had the uh, wife beater. Oh, I didn't pick that up. I just thought you were just trying to be like white trash. Then you told it to me. <laughs> I didn't realize it was being a woman beater, and then he. Had, I sent it to you because he was like, oh. "I can't open this. Open this." <laughs> that, that, it was actually real. I really couldn't open it. <laughs> Hey Craig, man, it's Chris Algeria. How are you doing, man? Nice to meet you. I'm uh, you, I'm buddies with uh with, with Gary Chone, and we do a podcast together. We we're talking uh talking about your your match coming up with uh that uh that lady. Oh, the, yeah, Gabby. <laughs> yeah, I was watching, I was looking at your page, fucking losing my losing my shit, laughing. I kept I kept thinking I'd be canceled over this. <laughs> no, no, everyone's yeah, that's okay with real. it. Real cancel culture. I think it's the opposite. I think, you know, you're, you're doing, you know, you're, you're, you're relinquishing gender and you're, you're competing. That's, that's, that's the, the sign of the times right now. Yeah. Super progressive. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I'd probably actually fight her if if they we're talking about doing it in a rising. If they said we'll pay you more for an MMA fight, I'd mm. fucking do it. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> like wrestlers that she outweighs by like 50 pounds so oh my god uh, if you started saying uh, that too and started saying like i mean i'll fight her and say like i've seen her fight i'm not you know i'm not impressed i got this i, I say that i say of course i'd fight and neither of us know how to fight <laughs> <laughs> I, I honestly just want people to look me up and there's one mma fight on my record and it's a woman <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Greg, listen, I loved you before, but I'm like I'm like more like obsessed with you now. I just <laughs> And since we've had you on the show, dude, I started like legit doing jujitsu. Oh awesome. Like I'm in there three to four times a week getting after it. In a geek. In a geek. In a geek. Dennis, where are you doing it? At Long Island MMA. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, gonna come, I'm gonna come and roll with you this summer. Okay. Yeah, that's fucking. Like I'm funny. like legit. Like uh, I I think if I do it right and get on some uh, like uh, testosterone, I could become a world champion. <laughs> yeah, there's no drug testing in this spot. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's fucking awesome. Gabby. <laughs> oh yeah, you think she's on shit? And then <laughs> I didn't wouldn't wouldn't peg her for that. <laughs> I don't know what gave it away. Oh my god, that's another thing you can do if you started being like the match is off. She's not going to take a drug test. Or you started saying dumb <laughs> shit like that. Like started going on about the drug test. <laughs> <laughs> or if they book it in Ryzen, it's obviously fair game. Oh my god, yeah, that's the best thing you've ever said. Yeah. I want to. Te- I want to test her. No. Um, to see if she's clean. I want to just know the levels going in, you know, just the science. <laughs> so then have your levels, like, okay. <laughs> she outweighs me. She has more testosterone. She's taller. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, and then the best is you did the, um, well, congrats, or you're just home now off the stimulus package tour or the oh, stimulus yeah, yeah, tour. Yeah. The soup is spread it to her. <laughs> So what'd you do? You did 10 cities in 12 days? Yeah, we drove from El Paso to Miami, did 10 cities, 12 days. It was actually, it was brutal. I, I barely survived that shit. What'd yeah, you drive? You're like, you were tired to the bank. Tired to the bank, yeah, yeah. yeah you're like, oh, I'm so tired here. <laughs> it's just exhausting. Like it would be like a seminar late at night. Obviously, roll with people. Every person tries to fucking just kill you. And then, obviously, late night, wake up, 5 a.m., drive to the next city. But, yeah, just rinse and repeat. But it's better than doing a seminar every weekend. I feel like I lose more time going away regularly than just all at once. Yeah, you're onto something there. What, uh, so, again... Just started like jujitsu, like really. You, I used to do to only no gi because I don't fight in a gi. But now I'm like, man, I think I become world champion. What is the now? Like you know, like uh, folk style wrestling and freestyle wrestling kind of go hand in hand, and help each other. Would you say that's the same for gi and no gi? Uh, a little bit. I think back in the day it used to be easier, but now like uh, you got guys that play lapel guard. Guys that just go for heel hooks. I feel like the knowledge is just getting too much to really be good at both. You know, like I don't I would... even have a belt yet. <laughs> I'm a no belt. A no belt. You just show up no belt. So I'm going from white belt right to uh, purple belt. My my jujitsu coach is getting me a custom made belt that has grading. It's gonna be a white belt that has grading for ten spots. <laughs> so I'm jump. I'm skipping blue belt. <clears throat> Yeah, skip it. You don't need it. In, in all honesty, though, I'm probably a purple belt right now. If, if someone was like, all right, this is your skills. Would you take a super fight with Gabby? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in a, whoa, whoa, whoa. In a gi or no gi? You get a pig. 
I just don't know all the tricky jokes yet with the with the club clothing. Wait, in MMA uh, or jujitsu? Oof. Because MMA, dude, go ahead. Yeah, I'll <laughs> kick the shit out of her legs. <laughs> I just want to see the stare down. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a date for this match? Uh, no, uh, communications have, uh, have slowed down, unfortunately. Uh, it was meant to, we were just going to do it on the day, free on our Instagram. But um, then she said we got some offers from Japan. I spoke to my manager and stuff. So I think that stuff's just going to take a while. But a lot of shows, I think we got hit up by five different organizations to put it on. But it's funny, when I reached out to people initially, nobody wanted it. Like I told Flow Grappling, I was like, guys, you Let's book me versus Gabby. It is going to be. What about Chael? Chael, I forgot to ask Chael. Oh my God! Chael, <laughs> I forgot. I forgot to I'll ask. I'll text him right now. <laughs> Wait, is anyone putting it on yet? Uh, I think Japan. Japan apparently said they want to do it for a New Year's Eve show. Dennis, t- like Dennis, text Chael. We could, we could, we could probably set this up right now. He's on. What's, what's hot? What's buzzing on the internet and that's what's going on right now is gabby garcia should i send him the link and just yeah 100 he well, might be with funny. kids no show would touch it flow grappling were like uh they sort of just like laughed it off they weren't interested in it but then the second we did uh some of the marketing for it everyone wanted it it was like they waited until the comments were positive they didn't want to be the ones to risk it i had to risk it is gabby in on it what, what's your guess? No, but then she comment. I didn't think so at first, but then she comments on your shit. Like Dennis pointed this out. She's always the comment on all your posts. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She could. She definitely laughed at the pole dancing video, the strip club video. She enjoyed that one. <laughs> all of them. I've but seen. Yeah. She she comments on your shit, so she might really have a crush on you, or she's in on the joke for sure. <laughs> Uh, Craig, would you be a top or a bottom? You think in that scenario? I'd be a pal or bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'd have a choice in the matter. <laughs> uh, now, if she rape chokes you, you could arm bar her, or how's... maybe. They're, they're, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna pull it deeper. <laughs> the, the real interesting thing would be if we got an offer from Pornhub. Would I do it? <laughs> They may pay more. <laughs> wow. That's probably pay well, yeah. Yeah, if you guys didn't like baby oil. <laughs> Go wherever the money's at, bro. Whoever wants to pay the most. <laughs> Whatever it takes. <laughs> I mean, what does Gabby want to compete? What, what does she want? She said she she said she was just down to do it. Uh, but she wants to do it in Japan. I think in Japan, her contract pays pretty well. So I'm hoping... Uh, my biggest payday, the biggest payday in grappling should be me fighting a woman, which should be historic. <laughs> yeah. I just historic in many ways. I, w- I want to do it to tell Gordon Ryan I get paid more than him. I'll be like, you're the number two paid grappler now. <laughs> <laughs> and when you tell her you, o- you always take second, you don't win anything. Yeah, second in every event, basically. <laughs> you go get the kid, and that's why you're going up for a girl. You only pick fights that you can win. That shit it was funny. Bro, I was dying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a strange thing, but it went well. Man, we so had the, uh, where did this all come from? You were just sitting in bed one day looking at the ceiling. You're like, I had an idea. Um, after the last flow grappling event, the girl had called her out and she was like, um, I'll face anyone. I'll fight anyone. I'll fight Gordon Ryan. And Gordon Ryan just laughed it off. But I was like, I can make something with this. Wow. <laughs> and then she bites back. She always bites back online, so it's perfect. Because I saw that one post you put and she was the first three comments. Like, you're so funny. And then like, stop it. And then like... <laughs> I think she's actually uh, got signed to Marvel, and she's going to be the She-Hulk. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's a big deal. Hang on. <laughs> That's a really big deal. That's a really big deal. Joking. You're making this up, no? <laughs> I'm not joking. Seriously? Yeah, yeah, she's, she's getting into acting. She Dude, your a- timing is perfect on this. Perfect, perfect. 
This is like, okay, so Craig Jones is probably a genius, 160 IQ level. Like, that's some real shit right there. Mm-hmm. Good move. Shit. Listen, guys, I got to go. Craig, man, nice meeting you, bro. Nice to meet you, Chris. Bro. Dennis. Wait, so, Chris, uh, Chris. I get closer to your, your scrap. Well, we'll get you back yeah. on. Should yeah, Dennis sure. bet $500 on Ben Askren to win this weekend? Let me know as we get closer in the odds change. Or... I, I have like 300 and change of like that I've won through betting. That's like at this point, it's free money. Mm-hmm. If, I was going to add to that to make it 500. I wouldn't add to it. But if, it, if, if, if the line gets wider, take it. Okay. Follow the line, bro. Follow the well, line. Well, then I'm going to stay with free money then. Yeah. All right, Chris Algier, you're a legend. Thanks for stopping by. All right, guys. Always a pleasure. Craig, do you know how smart that guy is? Oh, what with with uh, betting? No, like he's like a, he he was a world champion, and right before that, he like got his doctorate in like nutrition. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's God. a complete animal. Doesn't make sense. Usually, when like you see like a big tough guy, you're like he can't be that smart. He's like a borderline genius. Like, I don't get it. Yeah, but oh, smart right. guy, but he like didn't. Second guess my mood. Because, yo, I used to spar against him. I was like, second guess my like, Maybe he's using, like, psychology on me, like, to get me to do this when I should do that. Did he think of the idea to fight Gabby Garcia, though? Because <laughs> right now what's, I'm talking to the, the smartest guy in the world. You? What happened? No, I was talking to Craig. What's the next real event for you? Next real event is... Or is uh, that it? No, I got a match on the 30th. I've got um, Ty Rotolo. So I was making the joke because Ty just turned 18. So I'm just fighting women and children. Eight but he's I 80. love that. 8 to 80, they can get it. Oh, yeah, the next... I'll call out someone, someone pretty old. The oldest active competitor. <laughs> If you can make a joke against me, I'll try and have my hand. I'll try and get some money. Yeah. <laughs> you should, as soon as I. I oh, hang on. Real, that. hang on. On a serious note, combative jujitsu, I think I could be a real problem. Yeah, you should do it, man. Jump in Who there. Who do I have to contact? Uh, Eddie Bravo. It's his thing. What's my move to contact him? Do you, you probably have his number, right? Uh, I I think last time I spoke to him was just on Instagram. I could message him. So I, it's, I just Instagram him. I I got his or have Craig Jones slide in those DMs or I have his phone. I can get you his phone number, man. Oh, perfect. Yeah, he probably gets back to the phone number quicker. He's been unactive on Instagram. I think he's uh he's gone quiet from the uh, conspiracy posts lately. <laughs> So we had Alex Volkanovsky on the show before, and Mena started talking about something. What were you even talking about? We just got into like three guys from Long Island, three guys from New York. Craig, you're adopted here from New York. We take you. You're one of our own. We just started talking. We left Alex like sitting in the chair, well, no, like the guy from again, Australia. No, I think I really think the uh, the Wi Fi was bad. Was yeah, yeah. But we were all just talking. Where are you now? Are you Puerto Rico, right? Back to Puerto Rico. Yeah, back. Back to this wonderful place. <laughs> Are you with my buddy Dan Valmont? Dan Valmont, yeah. The uh, he works for BJJ Fanatics, right? Yes. Yep. Now, is that like your guys' hub? It it kind of is, but it's sort of. Um, I think we're, we're meant to be here for three three years, but uh, I don't know, man. It's 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 challenging down here. Hang on, so. I'm having trouble like wrapping that around my brain. I, you guys all train at Henzo's. Oh, we moved. The DDS moved to Puerto Rico. The whole team moved. DDS. What's what's that? I'm sorry. Like, uh, Danaher calls it like he's got his competition crew. So there's like 12 of us that moved from Henzo's down to uh, down to Puerto Rico. Sort of for three years. Yeah. Well, I mean. There's tax benefits down here, so if, if the guys, if we survive three years, we'll get some tax benefits. But, but yeah, Puerto Rico is wild, bro. It's very challenging. Very challenging. I know. Down here. <laughs> Listen, I know. I so 
I remember one time I went to a, a freestyle tournament in in, uh, in Puerto Rico, and I saw some girl. She didn't speak a lick of English, but her friend went to like San Juan University, so I was talking to her friend like, "Tell your friend I love her." Out <laughs> like. They were like, hey, we're going around the corner and smoke weed. I was like, I don't smoke weed. I can't. <laughs> but like, I made out. Like, I was, hang on. I went back to college and I was like, in contact. I was like, I'll learn Spanish for you. This, that, this. I, dude, I was going wild. <laughs> and then, you could have up here. What's up? And then my, yeah, I could have. And then I wrestled. I, so I wrestled there. Puerto Rico came up to me like, hey, how old are you? You have family here in Puerto Rico? I was like, yeah. Like, you could wrestle for our national team. I was like, we'll pay you 30000 Dude, things started ticking in my head. I was like, this could be it. <laughs> I didn't do it. That was it a terrible cool. ending to a great story. I was like, oh, shit. Did he go, off, did he go out for the team? So I have, I have another story with a terrible ending. My younger brother <laughs> is in the Coast Guard. <laughs> Stan, make sure you don't repost this because I'm sure he's not watched this live. My younger brother was in the Coast Guard. Uh, he, <laughs> they got like, they got ported in San Juan where they were stuck there for like two months. So he's got some bad influence friends <laughs> that they were like going to strip clubs and shit like that. He was in contact with like a stripper. His wife found it. They almost got divorced. <laughs> yeah, that's a dangerous game. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna have all the senoritas. So wait, other than Gabby, how many girls are in your rotation right now? <laughs> uh, she's the only one for me. So just focusing all your effort right now, trying to win Gabby over. That's and that's, dude, that's, that's, I was that's, in the shower. I was like, Let's, when Craig Jones comes on tonight, and I was naked. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like, listen, Craig Jones, what's how many girls you got? Listen, lie to us. <laughs> make the people on here want to be you. So if you're uh, make up a story right now, what would it be? I, I don't have any good stories. Ga- make, Gabby, make one up. <laughs> I'm gonna. Oh wait, wait, wait. Up. Make one up. Uh, tell us, tell us what happened the first time you and Gabby, you know, hooked up or hung out. Um, believe it or not, the first time I, <laughs> I actually went to Gabby's gym to train, and I tried to get her to step on the scales at her gym because I wanted to know how much she weighed, and she, <laughs> she refused. <laughs> She wouldn't do it. She ne- she has it in her contract that she won't weigh in for any events. No one knows her weight for 10 years now. So you tried to get her to weigh in for a date, basically. Well, yeah, weigh in for a date. What's the place in Vegas where if you weigh over a certain amount, you eat for free? That's, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> there's a place in Vegas? Yeah, there's a huge scale out front. 300 pounds and above, you eat for free. <laughs> <laughs> the, the heart attack. <laughs> the heart attack record. That's like Gabby. I know where we're going for our first date. <laughs> I ever think you want. You're in like her her purse. <laughs> oh my goodness! It's so funny. Wow. People love Gabby. Like uh, a lot of women love Gabby. Like they just love love her. Just like uh, obviously Japanese people love her. She was telling me she sells her. Well, she's like Godzilla for them. Godzilla. Ja- Japanese people love Godzilla too. That's true. That's true. Yeah, she sells her sweaty training gear for thousands and thousands of dollars. To who? What weirdo? Craig. What? Craig, why and are you buying her gear for that much money? What are you doing, bro? Yeah, like, what you are you doing? investing your money, bro. This is an investment. <laughs> Taking care of your lady. That's like, yo, know, it's like the bids are like $1. Two dollars, three dollars, then all of a sudden Craig buys it for like five grand. You know, it just makes it look good. She's like, I'm selling my shit for good money. <laughs> yeah, she sells it. I think she said she sold gear for forty thousand dollars before. That's wild, right? I'm actually really jealous. What creepy fucking weirdo bought <laughs> that gear for forty thousand dollars? Whoa, chill. He laughed at it. I said, come on. I said, we have Craig Jones on the show right now. I sent him the link first. I said, come on and tell him you will allow him versus Gabby Garcia. 
<laughs> I wonder if the UFC, UFC Fight Pass would even want that on the, on the network. <laughs> what? I mean, listen, at one point before COVID, Stan and I were going to put on our own show. I don't know. I don't. Th- I don't think I asked. I don't know if I asked Craig Jones. I remember talking. Yeah, he was out of our pay grade, grade, dude. What do you? No, no. We were asking. I have. I talked to Gilbert. Gilbert was going to compete, but I was going to be like, "Oh, Craig, come face Gilbert." I was going to do that to Gilbert. Oh, Gilbert Burns. Yes. That would be cool. Yeah, he's competing uh, April thirtieth against uh, Rafael Lovato. Pretty interesting. That's tough. How does that go from your expertise? I think probably Lovato, just because he's bigger. Yeah, he's, he's a lot bigger, I think. Yeah, like, like Gilbert, uh, and Gilbert's been more active in MMA. Lovato had to uh, had to retire, so yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm interested. Gilbert's crazy though, man. I remember back he was doing UFC fight, gi match, no gi match. He would just compete in anything, last minute, jump in to anything. Yeah, for anything. Yeah, which is makes him a very dangerous man, and because. Me personally, like uh, I've, I've taken a couple short notice fights, and the amount of pressure was like less because you're like, "fuck it," like the mindset's "fuck it" versus, you know, when you've been thinking about something and dwelling on it for like fucking ten weeks, you know, start fucking with your head. What's the uh, how, how long is a camp for uh, jujitsu? Like, what they what they call them? Uh, Oh, for a we, I mean, we don't even do camps. I just train seven days a week, six days a week, usually, um, yeah. and then just compete whenever. Well, here, gray area that obviously Menace was there. Craig, do you con- do you consider a jiu-jitsu match a fight? No, 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 really. It comes out from time to time, though, you know what I mean? But uh, it's not a fight. Now, where did that come Because it's like a selling point, right? You know what I mean, Menace. Like, oh, I got to fight this yeah. weekend. You have a jiu-jitsu match. Yeah. Like, no one's punching you in the face. But the highest he level... Said it, he said it earlier, but he said it, like, lightly. Now, he was like, I got a fight this week. He was like, no, I did a fight. And, uh, I, but I knew it was like a competition. Yeah, yeah. It just slips out, I guess, because you talk about... Uh, <clears throat> breaking someone's arm. About someone, yeah, actually, a lot of the time, someone else would say it, and then I just fucking just throw it along. But yeah, I, don't, I never mean it like, yeah, I got a fight coming up. You know what I mean? It's more just... A funny way to say it. I mean, you know, some matches, now that I'm sitting here thinking about it, like I guess it's like it could be worse than an MMA. Like, like yeah, I get in a fight, I'm gonna hit him and kick him. Like, no, well, here something I've heard. This guy's bones. Something no, no. I've heard is the highest level. It is like a fight because you guys are so physical, and you will be clubbing. There will be you'll come out of the match with all the scratches and shit. Granted, you have that at blue belt level, purple belt level, but at the highest level. It's it's relatable to a fight. The the only time I felt like my grappling match was a fight was when I faced Pal Harris because I was like, oh fuck, if I lose, I'll be badly hurt. That was the only <laughs> time I felt like a fight. That's the uh, the heel hook specialist in MMA, right? Yeah, that's the guy that never lets go. Did you no, face? I loved. I was there in Jersey when uh, fuck. What's the guy's name that has the awful tattoo? Alan Belcher. Yes, heel hooked oh, him. Okay. I was like, my head. I was like, Pfft. no. Alan Belcher avoided all his leg blocks and then TKO'd him. Bro, relook at it. Yeah, Alan Belcher didn't. <laughs> Alan Belcher didn't beat him by heel hook. Are you sure? Yeah, million percent. <laughs> Yeah. Are you looking it up? Yeah. Bro, I got, I got 20 bucks on it. All right, I'll bet you 20 bucks. Alan Belcher beat him by TKO. Okay, go ahead. Let's see. Fuck. Boy, now you yeah, think I should have been like, you know what? I got $320 on it. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I have in the. Where's that fight? Where's that fight? TKO punches and elbows. He he hooked him at some point. No, he just defended. So basically, what he did was he like leg weaved him over and over again and kept like um just n- not letting him get his ankle. So he was getting his knee but not getting his ankle. And Alan Belcher just like 
punched him and beat him up, like almost t- not taking his back, but in that like weird position. Well, then I owe you twenty dollars. Well, I didn't. Hang on, send me the article you're looking at because you could just be making it up right now. Yeah, I made that up. I wouldn't know. But what? Which Paul Harris did you get, Craig? Did you get the big juiced up Paul Harris? Yeah. So I got the guy. So for this match, right, we agreed to have a match at uh, 190 pounds. All right. And he had just had an MMA fight at, and he made 170. We made 172 or something. So he shows up to the weigh-ins at 220 pounds. And he's got a note from his doctor that says he will die if he cuts weight. <laughs> Dude, those Brazilians would do anything, right? Yeah, yeah. And then the, the promoter, Holes Gracie, looks at me and goes, I believe him. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, you're the white guy from right Australia. Now. Yeah, but nothing happened in the match. Terrible match. He just sat in front of me and slapped me in the head. And what happened? A draw? Uh, they gave me the decision because they gave him uh, stalling penalties. Okay. He literally would just slap me in the head and then smile at me for 15 minutes. Where are you guys in Puerto Rico and when should I come? We are in, uh, we will live around Dorado, but the gym is in San Juan. But we're still building, obviously we're trying to build this fucking gym. Ready for this? Yeah. My grandmother, or my uh, uncle lives near old San Juan. Oh, that's an awesome one. I'll bring the whole gang over. We'll get some like, we're legit. Chicken and rice, get it wild. We'll have a real, like, uh, fiesta. An, an authentic time. Yeah. Yeah, but then Dennis will walk it's, up and they'll start speaking Spanish. They'll be like, I don't speak anything. And they'll be like, oh, he's with them. He's with them. Like, hey, Craig, were they, you've been here for a little bit. What they just say? They, they being good? Oh, man. they The locals hate us down here, dude. It's rough. <laughs> I tell you the what, locals, you yeah. need a fake Puerto Rican like myself by your side. Wait, which yeah, locals? Need... The men. I don't care about the, the men. men. The men. Do Dude, the everyone, women. Everyone. What, everyone the women too hate you guys. Uh, everywhere. Even if you go to like a store to get something, fucking man, they fucking hate gringos down here. They not only hate gringos, they hate like... um non-spanish speaking non-puerto rican sounding latin speakers too like spanish speaking people okay it's hilarious now do any of you guys have like speak any spanish uh some of the guys do yeah um nick speaks nick or T speaks spanish damien speaks spanish yeah a few of the guys speak spanish but so like when you help. step out you're like nick i gotta go over to the you know the bodega i need you with me uh, most of the people here speak English or enough English. This is very true. Well, most of the locals, yeah. Like, um, so what my uncle was telling me was um, the reason why, like, the uh, pork in Puerto Rico is so good was there was, like, this, like, one guy, I guess, from my uncle that was going around to all schools and collecting, like, the food that the people didn't eat and feeding it to the pigs. So these pigs were like eating awesome shit. And the pig there was getting so good. USA came over and was like, oh, this pork is too good. We got to like, I think they're like, <laughs> they're taking there like taxing the shit out of her or some shit like that. But in the mountains of Puerto Rico, they're still the same. Like the, the pork up there is like, I know it's, it's very salty different. and fat, but this is just a little... So I gotta go looking for it. You gotta send me the directions. A little insider. I will send my cousin to come pick you up. <laughs> Kids are like a legit like baseball player. Bro, what are you waiting for? That's gold right there. Send your cousin to go hang out with Craig Jones. What are you waiting for? <laughs> because I'm like, I'm not a virgin anymore. <laughs> I text <text-gab- laughs> again. <laughs> <laughs> it's a two man job for sure. So yeah, I mean, we're on- I've seen I've I've been I've been to the strip clubs there. We're on your side here. We want to make this match happen. What did we get anything else back from Chael? 
He just ha ha it. I just, I maybe, I, I mean, from what Craig Jones is saying, I feel like it can't happen in the USA. No. What do you mean? We live in the society where everyone wants equal rights and they want to get rid of genders altogether. Until. Until equal what? Rights until a pie, a, a, like, until a real man like Craig Jones comes around and says, "You know what? I'll give women the chance. I'm willing to be that guy." Hang on, ready for this? Hang on, Stan. Can you, you're the same way as Gabby Garcia? Do you beat her? I fucking maul Gabby Garcia. <laughs> Whoa! Hundred percent. I how, fuck- many, how many straight black belt is she? Um, I don't know. She hasn't been submitted in thirty years. But how how old is she? Thirty five. Forty five. She's been competing since seven. Yeah. I'll punch her right in the fucking face, bro. Well, Stan, this is jujitsu. You can't do that. You understand that, right? I'll just grapple her like she's a man. She's a girl, bro. She has no chance. No chance. <laughs> after uh, after Craig picks her apart, I'll maybe pick up the pieces if she wants some of that smoke. Well, what I was saying was like, Craig is like an established black belt. You are not. So if anything, to make it like, hey, whoa, look what this girl could do to guys. She goes against you. If she wants it, what but I, Craig, wait, wait, wait. Then Craig Jones would be like, okay. I don't want to steal Craig's thunder. Craig's going to fuck her up just as I would fuck her up. Worse. Stan, you haven't moved around. Bro, she's a way better gas tank than you are now. How, wait, how long is the match for? And what are we talking? On, EDI rules? No time limit. To the death? I got her. I got her. How long hasn't she been submitted I'll in? I throw the match. If there's good betting odds. How long hasn't she been submitted in? I don't think she's ever been submitted on uh, in a match. Whatever she wants, that'll be the day. I'll be the first guy. Whoa. If she wants it. But I'm not going to steal Craig Jones's thunder. Why are you trying to get me in this match? You want 10 viewers for the match? Well, or a million? what I'm saying is she beats you. She's like, look, I could beat guys. And then oh. Craig Jones is like, well, I'm better than him, but I'm lighter than him. No. Get me out of you the equation. here too. Get me out of the equation and go Dennis Bermudez. Add some name value to it. What do you weigh right what now? What about me? Demetrius Johnson. <clears throat> Ooh. Did you see that, Menace? Did you watch that? Oh, I did. And even that. Uh, so if it happens against Gabby, so I guess we don't have to say, like, will you get into MMA only against Gabby? How old I are you now? So. Yeah, maybe I'll uh, 29. Too old for MMA. Oh, You've I'll seen, go Ryan. Have seen Ryan all fight? <laughs> Yes, yeah. When did Gary start fighting? Gary. I don't know. I think he's what? He's 6 and 0 now. Six fights. Probably only a few years ago. How come Gordon wasn't like, hey, my friend Craig, he always takes second place. He'll do grappling matches in one, two. Because now they got him doing those grappling matches. I'll, I'll, I'll try to get in there. They, I think they pay pretty well over there. But um, I don't think Gordon's allowed to do anything on UFC Network or anything now. So he's limited to flow grappling and one championship. Oh, because Obviously he signed an exclusive out, right? deal. Yeah, yeah. Wow. But you're like a complete free, free agent. Yeah, I can do I can do whatever. That's what I like about you, dude. Maybe this opens the door for Craig to slide in there as number one. I might, uh, I might create a TV show where I just travel the world fighting the biggest women in the world. <laughs> I like it. Scariest women. I'm sold. Whoa, whoa. Hang on. Did you see that one uh, show where the guy just like goes around the world like doing like combative sports? Oh, it was a human weapon or something? Something like fight that. Quest? They should have sent me and you, dude. <laughs> The oh, old show you're talking him. about. Or is it new? Was it on Netflix or was it on like Discovery? Or Nat Geo? The old shit. That shit was on Netflix. Yeah, I've seen that shit. That shit's old. You're saying they need to no, remix. No, no, no. There might be a remix to it. 
Craig, was it on Netflix? That guy? I can't even remember. I think it's a long time ago now. Uh, I think there was two, Human Weapon and Fight Quest. All right. This one Craig. had two guys and the other one had one guy, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Me and you could be the two guys. Ooh, Say what? Hey, uh, do you got, like, should I bring pads and some of that to get you into striking when I come to Puerto Rico or? <laughs> uh, just get me into the, the slapping, the slapping jujitsu first. Okay. So I wait, I had Forsters because it was Australian because we had Volkanovsky on and then we had Craig right. on, but I was like, I don't know if he'd even want Australian beer. So I got a can of Miller High Life. Cause I figured that would be oh, something yeah. like that goes right with the wife here and the red bandana. This guy might smack his wife. Yeah, like this guy might smack his wife. You got some. Uh, you got some domestic violence in a can, man. Yeah, but shout out to our beer sponsors, Great South Bay. Unfortunately, I'm not in New York, so I gotta go with the other thing. But all right, Craig, I come to Puerto Rico. Am I crashing with you, or I gotta stay with my family? Wherever you want to crash. I like that. I like that a lot. I remember one Where time. Uh, and your brother's strip club. What's that? You 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 should stay around the corner from your brother's uh, strip club house. Strip club <laughs> house. Well, no, hang on. Ready for this? So, I, the UFC had me go to like Puerto Rico to like I don't know, like bring awareness of the UFC or to Puerto Rico. So I'm there, and I'd have dinner with a guy that was like my guide, if you will. And he'd bring his lady down. We'd have like dinner and like a few drinks on the UFC tab. So I'm like, you know, have an extra one. He'd go to bed and it'd be like nine o'clock. I get a taxi. I'm like, take me to see some girls. I'm taking the strip club. And this guy's in the taxi. He's, he's drinking Corona while he's driving. I'm like, that's weird. And then the one time I was telling you about when I was there for wrestling, me and my buddy, we ended up at the strip club. The, the taxi driver went into the strip club with us. Ooh. It's a different, Stan, it's a different place. It's a different place. That's where we were about to go with Volkanovski, but his shit got fucked up. Uh, Wait, is Puerto, Puerto Rico happened? is a different place, too? Well, so uh, Puerto Rico has some sketchy places, too. Where oh, Craig God. Jones is a lethal weapon with... Submission joints, but they're like, Ringo, over here, give me all your stuff. <laughs> but if he had a guy like me, I'm like, no, you're good. And then they'd start speaking in Spanish, <laughs> and you'd like, be like, does I'm anyone like, know what he's saying? I'm like, Nick, tell him we're good. Speak Spanish. I was giving like the nod, like, yeah. <laughs> Couple uh, you guys have Volkanovski on? Yeah. I'm about to be on the, I mean, his assistant coach on the Ultimate Fighter the next season. Love it. That'd be pretty fun. Wait, you're going to be one of his assistant coaches? <laughs> I love it. Sam, we got two coaches yeah. in one shot. And I don't think either one of them was supposed to tell us anything about it. <laughs> yes. So he was really? on here, and I was like, yo, how's my boy uh, Frank doing? And he was like, Frank's doing good. He's going to be on the show with me. We know. I wasn't going to tell anybody who the coaches are. Boom, boom, boom. And then. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but hang on. He, did we, Stan, did we tell him we were going to have Craig on? No, I don't think we did. We didn't get to it because it seemed like Alex was down there. He would have been like, that's my mate. He's coming on, too. <laughs> so oh, that's my mate. We're going to have him come down. What'd you say? <laughs> no, Craig, you're going to be in Vegas. How long are you in Vegas for? The whole thing? Um, I think it's from, yeah, the whole thing. That's awesome. April April 17th to like May 22 or something. It's a long time, hey. Yeah, so we're going to do one of those episodes where we're going to try to get you, Alex, Frank Hickman. I want a whole Team Volkanowski episode. Not like That's his it. actual team. I'm talking about the coaching staff. Especially if he's bringing out superstars. Uh, like yo, the I, I guarantee Brad's going to be there. 
Even wait, that's a real thing too. Andy, I was just thinking, I was about to call you the intergender, the, the world's first intergender world champion officially. Henry Cejudo tried to call himself that, like wins by forfeit, if you will. But this guy's really trying to go out there and make the fights happen. Yeah. And he's going up five weight classes. I'm trying to, I'm trying to do it. We're gonna get a. I hope they make an official belt in Ryzen that says intergender champion. <laughs> I'll talk to my guy, and worst case, we'll just send you a belt. There'll be a belt there that you can host up from Menace and the Man, the intergender we, uh, world champion. Oh, hang on. This is a great – what if you – would you? let's say that it gets going, it's official. If you just come out with your own belt, like you walk to the, the mat <laughs> with an already inter-gender – I'll have the belt and a beard. The wheels are going in my head. They would probably do this shit in Florida. They'd probably let this shit happen in Florida. It's like a $64 plane ride from Puerto Rico for Craig. Craig. Oh my God, I just had this vision. I'm just I'm just putting things together, right? You come out, right? You have your, like, your competition like uh, cheetah or leopard print shorts on, right? wife beater red bandana but you drive a, a um a lawnmower to the competition <laughs> with a beer that would be perfect that would be perfect you know they have all the lights and there's like a you know the, the platform was like pretty wide this could be a real fit i think okay. That would be the best thing since Stone Cold. I gotta get some uh, like spaghetti stains on the on the wife beta too. Yeah, one or one or two meals. One or two meals. Like a band, uh, like a random band aid on like your forearm. I need to get out. I'll, I'll get a Bob White tattoo. You'll get a. Yes. Oh wait, you're that committed. You'll get like a real tattoo. No, Listen, I'm not, no, he'll get a, uh, a henna. Well, he was saying was real tattoo. I could get Gabby's name on my ass cheek as a real tattoo. Ooh. Wow. And, like, you could tell her I have your name on my ass. <laughs> Maybe Gabby yeah. with, like, a, like a, a kiss mark. Gabby in a lawnmower. Wow. What? Hang on. In a real, like, what do you think this is, like, worth? I don't know. I feel like Japan would pay a ton of money for it. Like, could this all send up and be, like, a million dollars? No, no. I think probably over 100000 for sure. But, yeah, I don't know. I doubt. I doubt. Well, I mean, well, I-, I guess what I'm thinking about is, like, <clears throat> the catapult of your name even further Oh, true, true. Right, yeah, I, mean, I mean, potentially. I just hope I break into so like when that when it happens. TMZ reached out, ESPN reached out, um, Russian Times put an article up. Uh, but Russian Times fucked up because they put the article up based on the tale of the tape I created, which was completely like, which I completely exaggerated <laughs> everything. <on. laughs> what the. Uh... I just love it. I think this is this could probably be, except for learning jujitsu, this might be the second best thing you've ever done. <laughs> I just want to be on the news. I want to be on like CNN. No, no, no. Then best best thing, thing ever, Dennis. What do you mean? Learning jujitsu. I said after learning jujitsu. Anyone anyone can learn jujitsu. Not everyone's gonna be like, okay, I want to fight her. Not everybody's well, in that. I, hang on. Well, anybody can live, learn jujitsu, but not the man's a. Uh, well, that's what I was going to say before. I, obviously, you're going a little Andy Kaufman. I didn't know who that is. What do you mean? You never seen that? Andy Kaufman is the original intergender champion of the world. He's basically an actor who was on like the show Taxi, who went out and started going into arenas and he was putting plants, like he was having people that he knew was gonna come out and he would wrestle and beat girls up in the ring and then say, 
I'm the greatest man in the world. Like, I'm better than any woman. And he would basically challenge women. Yeah. So it's I think great, it's a great deal. Yeah. So, Stan, that's like you going to like a whorehouse, taking care of business, being like, hey, listen, I got some little bent over yonder. You're going to show up. I'm going to pay you so much. We're going to wrestle. We're going to do what we did here. But with our clothes on, don't be nasty. And then. Yeah, that might have, that probably was what he was doing. Wow. Yeah. But that's not what Craig Jones is doing. What do you mean? But Craig Jones is doing something similar. We've seen it. We've seen it once before. We've never seen it done as classy as Craig Jones is doing it. Now, me personally, I think my dad like, what the fuck you doing, eh? You're an asshole. What? Are, what are you think? Okay. An idiot. Good question. What do the parents say about this? What did my parents say? My my dad never even said anything. He just laughed about it. My mom messaged me immediately. He was like, "Are you facing a girl?" I was like, <laughs> "She's like, why?" Like, For money. <laughs> For money. <laughs> Listen. You know how tough it is living in New York City, Mom? You have no idea. You live in Australia. <laughs> right? Your rent's expensive. Yeah. And then it's like, I'm actually facing a kid the weekend after, but <laughs> how are you and Dad doing? <laughs> <laughs> but God. we're glad to see you, Craig. We'll let you get out of here. We'll wrap up this episode. There is a fight card this week, and one of your country mates is where is is Whitaker from Australia? Yeah, yeah. Cool. I think he's born born in New Zealand, but basically moves to Australia immediately, as far as I know. But yeah, he's fights in Gastelum, right? Yeah. yeah. So I I forget. Do you watch the fight? This is the rematch, right? No, oh, the last fight got canceled because he had a uh, no, 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 no. Uh, they fought before. No, it got canceled. No, they were scheduled. Oh. Okay. Like the party. It got canceled like the day before the fight. Okay. Yeah. Who you guys go? Oh. We have a rule here where if you've come on the show, we always go for you. So where Kelvin, I send Kelvin text messages. He hasn't I been on the show yet. Robert number? Whitaker has been on the show, so. I got Robert Whitaker. I just, I just think, well, that's that's our rule. But I, uh, I think Robert Whitaker wins, though. He's oh. only lost to like one guy, right? To Alessandro, right? At one eighty-five, yeah. Yeah. Eh, you all beat him. I thought yeah, you all beat him that one fight. One of those two fights. What about you, Craig? I think I think Gastelum had a better chance when they were originally scheduled. Gastelum looked a lot better back then, but he hasn't looked as good. So I think, yeah, I think uh, I think right now Rob's gonna gonna win pretty easily. Do you know what I've heard through the grapevine, Craig? Is Kelvin has a problem with the marijuana? Oh, where, really? where me or you might smoke weed and be like, oh, you might be like, oh, I'm going to go be a world champion. I'll be like, oh, I'm going to go do anything, something. I'll Carpentry. be productive. Something. Kelvin smokes weed and is just like, nah, I just want to chill. Oof. That's what I've heard. That explains white cup problems. Yeah, I've heard Kelvin does train hard, is obviously a world-class athlete, a killer, but... Kelvin has a weed problem. It's a problem for now. Kelvin. The winner of this fights for the title. You think? Um, no. Do you think Kelvin? Kelvin's on a little bit of a skid. Whitaker wins. Whitaker. Well, he's might... stepping in. Uh, kind of. Oh, even that. That's where we should have opened the show, but we had Volkanovski jump right on. Is how good Marvin Vittori looked. Yes. This past weekend, it's either Marvin Vittori or. People don't want... It'll be Marvin Vittori because Adesanya already said he doesn't want to fight Robert Whitaker or Kelvin again. Isn't your job as a champion like whoever steps in front of me, I will beat? Not like, whoa! Like... Yeah, but they both kind... I like this guy. 
they both kind of need a highlight reel. So you're saying if Whitaker sleeps Gaslam within three, then it could be him. Yeah. Okay. But I don't think if Ke- if Kelvin knocks Whitaker out in the first round, I don't think he's getting a title shot. Got you. Which isn't real. Well, Kelvin's lost three of his last four. You said if Kelvin knocks out Whitaker in the first round, right? Yeah. Right, which I don't think would happen. But... It, it could, but it's not going to. Okay. Do you uh, want to work down from the main event down? Just yeah, if, if, if Craig wants to go over the card with us, sure. Are you into that? Yeah, let's do it. You he could also tell us to fuck off. You got to drink like tequila or something like that. Or... Austin, Actually, in Puerto Rico, they drink rum. Or Austin Hubbard versus Dakota Bush. I don't think we really care or know either one of them, do we? Where'd you go? Tapology to the bottom of the card. That's not the fight. Oh, no. I was going from the top down. Oh, then why would we're not going to end with Austin Hubbard and Dakota Bush? Oh, okay, Sam. <laughs> Jessica Penne versus Lupita Gudinez. Yeah, I got Jessica Penny all day, every day. Who does Craig Jones Yeah, got? I guess. I only know Jessica Penny. I don't know the other gals, so I got to go Jessica Penny. Yeah. Uh, Jessica, is she a black belt? Yeah. Okay. So, Craig, you'll appreciate my fight picks for women. I always go off of who I would rather have sex with. <laughs> Fighting <laughs> skill and all that goes right out the window. Give me one second, Sam. I see grab one thing. So you always pick Gabby? I'd always pick Gabby, yeah. <laughs> I'm into apparent. There's rumors. Some people might say I'm into trannies. So. But I'm going to go Je- I'm gonna go Jessica Penne. I like Jessica Penne. I've hung out with her before. She's a sweetheart. And she's attractive. You ever meet you ever meet like a fighter chick? And you know fighter chicks, they're all like not to be rude they're all not they're hot because they're around a bunch of they're the minority. They're in a room with a bunch of guys. Jessica Penne in person looks good. Yeah. I'm oh, wow. into it. Josian Nunez versus Zahara Zara Farin. I gotta look at another. I'm gonna go with the Brazilian girl. Anthony Burchak versus Tony Gravely. Anthony. I know Burchak. So I'll go for him. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Anthony too. He's pretty big for that weight class, I feel, right? Yeah, this is 135. He's got that like that sit like uh what was yeah. the movie with the rats? I thought he was, a, was like, a kill- I thought he was a forty five pounder Burchak. But I guess he's a thirty-five. Yo, do you know the movie with the rats, where the guy, the the guy was a killer and he had like a bunch of rats? I think the movie might have been called Rats. The same guy from Charlie's Angels. No. The bad guy. I don't, I don't know. Nothing. That. I avoided that movie. Why? Because it's about rats. It doesn't sound like a good movie. No, Charlie's Angels. Oh, I've seen that one. Yeah. You know the bad guy with the slick hair? Yeah, but I've never seen rats. That's what this guy, the Burchak, he kind of looks like that guy. Oh, all right. I was like, where's he going with this? Sorry, that's all. Sorry. At the party. Alexander Romanov versus Juan Espino. Espino. I don't know enough about those guys. I'm going with Juan. I'm going with Juan because Craig Jones is in Puerto Rico. That guy's like a legit Spaniard. Is this guy even Puerto Rican? I think he's probably something else. He's probably uh, from All right. State. Tracy Cortez versus Justine Kish. I don't know those guys. <laughs> I don't know. Justine anything. Kish. She fights kind of ugly. She's the one who shit her pants that time. It's like this really? girl definitely up. has some... some- okay. Craig she Jones is like, really? I pick her. I'm with her. <laughs> yeah, she shit her pants Cortez, one time. Cortez, like, she's committed. She doesn't look like a killer. Um, I'm gonna go Cortez. Why, Stan? She's better looking. 
<laughs> uh, I'm going to go Cortez off of what corner she's in. She's in the red corner. She's better looking than she has a better record. Okay, I'll take it. I'm into it. And the other girl... So here, you want me to go into the real technical details? The other girl shit her pants before. You ever have a girl that it's so hot that it's like, oh, I would eat her shit or I'd fucking let her shit. You know, whatever you would say. Some stupid, vulgar shit. I would not. I would not. I'm not into it. So, Tracy Cortez. Oh. What? Stan, that was insane what you just said out of your mouth. Ger- it, it's the Fosters, bro. The Fosters. I'm, I'm acting Australian. And now I got this shit. Four and a half percent? I don't know. Anyways, next. Gerald Mershart. Next. Bartos Fabinski. I got Gerald. That dude's that dude's tough for sure. Yeah, I think Gerald as well. Hopefully he gets uh, some revenge after that quick knockout, right? Is he coming off the Hamzat yeah. knockout? Kamzat Chimaev knockout. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Which I feel like that wasn't him. I don't know. He got caught. Yeah. He got caught. Andre Olavsky versus Chase Sherman. I mean, come on. I got to go with my guy, Andre. Oh, that guy, Chase Sherman's a bad dude. Chase Sherman's a big motherfucker. Yeah. I got to go Chase. Andre's been fighting longer than I've been alive. Yo, he won his last fight, didn't he? He's been, no, I think he lost the last one, but he was winning. Chugged. Oh, uh, yeah, he lost the last one. He got rare naked choke, but he w- he did win two fights before that. I'm going to go Chase Sherman. Andre I just is... Gotta, listen, I, the mouthpiece I had the whole time, it's Andre. You know, I should try. I should DM him. Send him a picture of me in the fang. He's like... <laughs> yeah, you missed that opportunity. What if he gets fucking TKO here? He's probably going to retire. Who gives a shit? He's still a legend if we have him on the show. You oh, he's it. an absolute legend. I would get him on any time. Uh, All right, I'm going Chase Sherman. Jacob Mulcorn versus Abdul Razak Alassan. Jacob. I'm going Abdul. Jacob's four and one. Abdul is ten and three. So this dude, Jacob, to be coming in at four and one. Jacob trains with Whitaker. Okay, so that's why he's coming in. I believe. His one yeah. loss is the Phil Hawes. I guess he got caught. All right, I'm yeah, gonna go. Quick. I'm going to go Abdul Razak Alassan. Yeah, I'm gonna do the same because I think Jacob and Mike is that Phil over there. Ricardo Ramos versus Bill Agio. Where'd that go, Ricardo? I don't know those guys either. I'm going go Bill. Ricardo. He's the. Uh, the CE, yeah. What's the, what, what CFFC? Is that? CFFC, yeah. I'm going him. What do we got there? Andre Olaski is actually the favorite, so I like Chase Sherman as the underdog there. Bro, get out of here with that shit. Going back to that fight, this fight, Bill Agio is the underdog. I'm gonna go with Bill Agio. Yeah, I'll take it. Didn't Jared Gordon fuck him up? Yeah, but tough fight. Yeah. Like, right. he's durable. Jared beat him up yeah. for, I believe, three rounds. Yeah. Luis Pena versus Alex Munoz. Munoz, brah. <laughs> I only know Pena, so I'm going to go Pena. Uh, is- Alexander Munoz is... He's that dude. You know that dude with a one nub at a... Is he fight, where's that dude fight at Jersey? Um, Nick Newell, Connecticut. Nick Newell. He had to fight Munez, and Nick Newell is the fucking beast. He had to fight Munez on the contender series to get into the house or to get into the UFC. Munez is like a Division One wrestler. Munoz. Yes. Oh, I think you said keep saying Nunez. It seems like. No, Mun. Munoz. 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 And Munoz is like the guy at Alpha Male. Yeah. Like, Uriah Faber is like, this is, like, killer. Like, he's a gym legend, apparently. And, and he just... lost one fight that was, like, he got, 
Like it was gonna go his way, but he got caught, didn't he? Got out grappled, I believe. I forget. He lost the decision. Do. Who the fuck? I don't know. This Nasrat Hakwa Prasarat. Oh. Which oh. is like kind of like a no name. Uh, all right. No, he's good. But I'm going to go. I'll go Alex I'm still Munoz. going Munoz. M- Alex Munoz. Munoz. He's going to wrestle. Fuck Munoz. Bruce Pena. Co main yes. event Jeremy Stevens, Dracar Close. I mean, listen. Jeremy Stevens wins. It makes me look like more of a fucking legend. Jeremy Stevens all day. Craig Jones, I don't know if you know, I fought Craig, I, I fought Jeremy Stevens, and like it was real back and forth. And then the third round, he threw this eye shot when I should have like slipped. I thought like, you, were I thought, me. Well, you were up two nothing, I think. No, he knocked me around, but I was in his face. Close rounds, but yeah, yeah. He. Anyways, he, long story short. He edged me out with a, a KO. So Jeremy Stevens. <laughs> wait, wait. Jeremy Stevens is the favorite here, but the fight's at 155. I know that. Yeah, we talked about that. Jakar Close is a 55er, right? Yeah, he's a 55er. All right, I'm going to go with Jakar Close. Jakar just, just got knocked out by Darius, right? Close. Just got knocked out by Darius, and he's lost to David Tamar. Why'd you look at me sideways, Menace? You think Jeremy Stevens wins this easily? Listen, you think anybody takes down the Menace easily? He's not the same Jeremy Stevens, though. He's lost four in a row. Four in Hang a row. Hang on. He, he had lost, was it three in a row before he beat me? Yo, two. Jeremy Stevens, you put him, if you push him in the corner, he, lost he two knows moves. he's got to, like... Yeah. This is a scary Jeremy Stevens because he's lost four in a row. So if he loses this, he does. Did Craig Jones bore you, Stan? No, I just haven't eaten yet, so I'm low on energy. Oh, that's why you're yawning, you fat fuck? No, you bore me. You don't look like you didn't just eat. You bore me. But here, he's lost four in a row. Hopefully he wins this one, so it makes Munich look good. But I think Jakar Close wins this one. Guy, what the fuck is his deal? Robert Whitaker, Kelvin Gasolin. We went over the skin, you fucking dick. I know, so we'll go real through our, real quick through our picks. Who do you got, Menace? Robert Whitaker. Craig? Yeah, Whitaker. Whitaker for sure. Ooh. All right, we're going Robert Whitaker then across the board. I tried to, my brain was like, go for Kelvin, he smokes weed. It just didn't happen, so. Robert Whitaker it is. Well,. Robert, if we're giving Kelvin anything, he has age on his side. Yeah, he's still like 28, right? Something like that. Rob's only 30, right? He's 29, and Whitaker is 30. Whitaker's young, too. Oh, okay. But yeah. Craig Jones, we're going to do this again because uh, you're going to be out there coaching with Volkanovski and we're going to do some more stuff with him soon now that he's in the States. And maybe Menace for is going sure, to... Me- sure. Menace might pop into Puerto Rico. He's looking to get some, some stripes on his white belt. Oh, yeah. Come down. <laughs> Yo, how many stripes do you think I could get in like a week? If I had a 10 grade Wait. white belt. We could fill that shit up. Bro, like imagine how cool you'd be if you had a fucking stripe from Craig Jones. Yeah. I mean, this is a sweet big, big deal. Why don't you just go around the world, Menace, and get, like, celebrity stripes? Now, hang on, Craig Jones. How the jiu-jitsu community works is, like, kind of new to me. Like, with wrestling, it was like, yo, train with everybody, get everything, make it your own. But but jiu-jitsu is similar to MMA when it's like pride where like he doesn't know more than that. Like what can he give you that I can't, right? Yeah, there's a lot of that. A lot of that weird shit, but not amongst high-level competitors. It's not as bad. Well, as you guys are already guys. like black, but it doesn't even matter, right? But let's say I'm coming up to the belts. I'm not saying like whatever, but like some 
instructors might be like, really? Craig Jones gave you a stripe, but you trained at my gym? That's a thing, no? Or they would, they, Yeah, that would be weird with that. Like, still. I don't think you were ready for that. Craig Jones thought you were ready, but I, I didn't think you were ready, you know? <laughs> it's possible. That's a, that's a thing, though, right? For sure, yeah. Or if I went there and I came back like, hey, I got a brown belt. Like, like you're still a white belt. <laughs> Well, yeah, that would be weird. Because Stan could touch on like, suppose. Well, I believe it though. We had two black belts trying to give you like your brown belt, right, Stan? Me, yeah. Back in the believe day, it or not, Craig, back in the day, Craig Jones would have been like, "I got a strike for this guy." Take it. Yeah, he would have had me. <laughs> like, here, have a piece of tape. But here, the way that uh, the world works. Jake Paul's got a big fight this weekend. My phone just buzzed. TikTok star Justine Paradise says Jake Paul forced her into a sex act. Jake Paul denies the allegation through through a statement from an attorney. So Jake Paul's forcing some dick on some girls is what is coming out. This happens every time Conor McGregor fights too. So is Jake Paul that big? Well, that big or that rich? That big. Well, he's in definitely that big. He's got millions of YouTube YouTube subscribers. Well, yeah. So before uh, before a Conor McGregor fight, the the scandals come up. You know what I mean? So maybe now that's the new norm. Before a Jake Paul fight, the scandals come up. Craig, so Craig, Craig Jones, so who you, who are you rooting for this weekend? Ben Askren or Jake Paul? Uh, I mean, I hope Ben does it, but uh, yeah, I really don't know. I really don't know with that one. That's like me and Gabby having a boxing match, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh my God. Now it's just like, we're just going outside ideas. What if you and Gabby did like a day event? Like 10 a.m. we're going to have a boxing match. 2 a.m. we're going to wrestle. 4 a.m. Wow. We're- 3 a.m. 3 a.m. we're going to fuck. <laughs> 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 we gave you some gold we gave you some gold this episode you gotta just put it on your social media come out with it and be like you know Gabby Keep hyping. shit's about to go down Gabby hey you can definitely get sponsored John Deere if if not I will try and you know get some money to buy you a tractor to ride to the mat I want it to be a shitty looking tractor though yeah we'll go on like uh Ready for this? Craigslist. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> See what I did there? Right. <laughs> you can be like, I went on my own list, bought this here tractor. <laughs> Man. Oh, wow. That's a whole area you can go. Is that you could be Craig's. You could be Craig from Craigslist. So I went on my own <laughs> website, Craigslist. I like where you went with that one. That would be funny. Wow. But listen, Craig, I don't know if you've had a better brainstorming. This is essentially like a meeting. So. Yeah, this was a good brainstorming session. Yeah. Oh, and if, meeting. if I get any ideas, Craig, because I've when I as soon as I saw it, I sent it to Menace. I was like, Menace, you're gonna love yeah. this. And he loved it. We're into it. We're sold. <laughs> So anything you need from us, any insight or any ideas we get, we're going to throw your way. If you like them, take them. Take them as your own. We didn't come up with anything. It's all Craig Jones. 160 IQ. He's dating Gabby Garcia. (laughs) Second place in everything. You're the man, Craig Jones. Thank you for the time. Oh, my God. I love This has been maybe one of my favorite episodes. Hey, Craig, thanks for coming on, Buzz. Until next time. Thanks, guys. Speak to you soon. All right, brother. We'll talk to you soon. Stay safe out there in Puerto Rico. Don't get shivved. Yeah. Margaritas and banging senoritas. Yeah. Puerto Ricans always have knives on them, except for me. Are you the Man. only? You're the only. Uh, dude, did, hang on. Stan, did we just come up with so much gold right there? Oh, gold. It's like, damn, Craig Jones. Like, you better just give us a shout He's out. He's like, Texas, something. like, hey, can I come on your show again? I got some, I got, I got a couple of ideas I'm going to run past you guys. But yeah.
I'm so in. I'm more in on Gabby Garcia versus him than I am Jake Paul, Ben Askren. Well, the thing is between... Wait, 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 whoa, 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 What do you mean, any whoa? I'm talking about a fist fight in Ryzen. I'm not talking... Still, I think it's very one-sided. Oh, I thought you were going to say, well, Jake Paul and... You know, it's a good. No, I'm, oh, okay. well, I'm saying with Jake Paul and Ashkin, there's a lot of question marks running through my head, and I don't like it. If they booked, if tomorrow, so Jake Paul versus Ben Askren is this weekend. If tomorrow, Ryzen announced that they're going to do Gabby Garcia versus Craig Jones in an MMA fight, I probably wouldn't even care about watching the fights this weekend. I would just be waiting for that. Why can't you do both? This is America, dude. Because I would just wait for that. I'd be done. My fighting my, my fighting watching is over at that point. You're an idiot. That's like That's like I'll jerk off next week because Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's nothing to do with jerk. It was a bad it was a bad joke that you took elsewhere, but Menace and the Man I epi- see where you're going with it, but Episode you hundred and eleven. Like I said if there's one event I was gonna pay for this one year this year, it'd be the Jake Paul, Ben Askren, you'd be like, no, I'll save my money well, for the episode one eleven. Your boy Gregor, he he, I sent him the link. He's no showing, but we're out of time. So sorry, Gregor. Uh, I, I heard you booked the fight against Diego Ferrara. Hopefully, you win it. Oh, is that real? That's real. Okay. You know that dude, Diego Ferrara, right? I'd have to look him up. He's tough. He beat Pettis. He's he's got some wins. Okay. It's a tougher fight, if you ask me, than Brad Riddle. All right. But, Gregor, maybe we'll see you next time. Chris Weidman, we ran out of time. And uh, it was good seeing you, Menace. I'll talk to you soon. Likewise. Well, see you later.